Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's not easy to speak after two experts have spoken without repeating much of it. So I will try to do as much of uh, differentiation as possible. So Indian agriculture and uh, innovation and using smart agriculture as a, um, you know, as a theme, I want to just highlight a few aspects that uh, we have made uh, huge progress in agriculture since independence. We have increased our food production by six to seven times. Uh, but some of the challenges, if you want to list out the challenges of agriculture in India, have remained more or less unchanged over a period of time. And the first one is climate change, uh, which is something new. That is the only thing new which is appearing in this list nowadays. So water management is becoming more and more difficult. As you can see here, uh, those spots, red spots which are showing up uh, towards uh, some parts of India are going to create major water related stress on agriculture in future. So we need to find some solutions for that. Soil degradation we talked about, lack of infrastructure, still many villages and many farmers don't have access to good roads, warehousing and uh, power, things like that. Uh, one of the issues is low risk-bearing capacity of the farmers so over a period of time because the profitability of the farming has not improved. And this is one of the serious issues, and there was a discussion on this also earlier, that if the for profitability does not improve over a period of time, uh, his capacity to bear risk comes down. This is one of the reasons for the suicides and things like that. And this is quite high in rain-fed areas. We have more than 100 million hectares of rain-fed cultivation in the country which is more than 60% of our total cultivated land. So that's where we need to find some solutions. Uh, market risks are very high. Karnataka is the only state in the country which has modified its APMC, which is the Agricultural Produce uh, Market Committee Act, and uh, has integrated the markets within the state. We still have to do it in other states. There is a national agenda to link all the markets in the country, and I think that's a huge that's a huge and huge reform which has to happen, which can de-bottleneck the entire agricultural produce, marketing, and improve the profitability of the farmers. High market risks, uh, I talked about inadequate financial services, we talked about credit and insurance. Then labor shortage, in a country like India, which has 1.25 billion population, it's ironical to talk about labor shortage, but it is a true fact that uh, we don't get enough labor at a reasonable cost during the peak agricultural operations in the villages. So this is one of the issues which has increased uh, the burden of carrying on agriculture for the farmers. The drudgery of, daily drudgery for the farmers has really gone up because of these factors. So we need to reduce adverse impact on environment. You know, our green revolution has put a lot of inputs into the, mark into the environment, like fertilizers, pesticides, water. So we need to also find sustainable methods of cultivating crops with the minimum use of chemicals. Lack of data capture from the field, I think this also talked about that we don't have access to reliable data which comes from individual farms. That is one of the reasons why we are not able to offer many solutions to the farmer. And in general, there is a poor use of technology and science in agriculture. When I say technology, whether it is biotechnology or it is IT or any other technology, uh, the usage is not as per uh, the international standards or as per the requirement. So how technology can help? I think there were uh, some uh, charts shown earlier also. I think more or, more or less this will be covered under that. So I don't really need to talk much about it except to say that mini mini miniaturization of farm machines is a big area for us because of the increasing shortage of labor. And the machines cannot be just imported from outside because they don't suit our small farm holding sizes. So miniaturization is one of the aspects, and I will show you some photographs on that. Uh, that is going to make a huge difference to the farmer. And data capture from field using sensors and satellite technologies, I think this is an area where all the technology geeks sitting here will be able to help. That is something where really uh, I do believe that what we could not achieve in 50 years in agriculture to get the farmer out of the mess can be done through the use of technology. And I think that's where technology can really help the farmer to leapfrog from the traditional ways in which he has been cultivating 
to really come to a situation where he can be as happy having access to information and having access to good quality uh, digital uh, access systems so that his life becomes more easier and he is able to make more money. So basically what we are looking at is some kind of integrated systems um, as the earlier speaker also spoke about. So what we need is an integrated system in which there is there is breeding, there is software, there is hardware, there is fertility management, there is yield monitoring, including precision seeding and variable rate of fertility. So I think uh, we need to have uh, using usage of hardware and software at different points in the entire chain uh, that will make it into an integrated solution. Finally, all of them adding up through use of uh, satellites and other technologies so I, I, I'm not a technologist, so I won't be able to prescribe exactly how it can be done, but I'm sure all of you sitting here will be able to figure it out. Agricultural inputs have seen some level of uh, innovation, like in breeding and research. Some of the new tools, like biotechnology tools, are being used. In biotechnology, we have GM technology, which we have seen with BT Cotton in India. There are many non-GM applications, which are using molecular markers and other precision tools to improve breeding and improve the crop uh, crops in general. And there are future uh, things coming here which particularly water efficiency if you see. Uh, this is a trait which is coming up which can make a huge difference to Indian farmers because we have more than 100 million hectares of uh, uh, dry uh, rain paddy cultivation in the country. And uh, we are working towards more and more uh, convenience and environmental impact uh, through the technology. Agrochemical companies are working through reverse engineering, process development, and reducing the cost. Agricultural equipment miniaturization and automation, and economic practices, basically, we still follow many old traditional practices in the farm. For us, still, agriculture means plowing the field. The world has moved ahead of plowing a field. Plowing a field is no longer considered to be the in thing in agriculture. But for us, still, that is the starting point of agriculture. So I think there is a lot that has to be done in terms of improving the economic practices, which will make a huge difference also to the productivity and the profitability. So like I mentioned, there are future technologies coming like drought tolerance, nitrogen utilization, which can reduce the usage of fertilizers in the country, particularly nitrogenous fertilizers. This will make a huge difference to the soil degradation issue and also the fertilizer subsidy issue. And in general, uh, there are higher yielding uh, traits also which are coming up. So some of them are coming through GM technology and some of them are coming through non-GM technology. Water management, uh, this just an example. This is, a, this is a company called AMC and Skywave Mobile Communications and Inmarsat in US, where the government uses this satellite technology and with the help of, it's an architecture of sensors and uh, satellite technologies to monitor water levels in the source points and also in the utilization areas and in the conservation areas. So this is where actually uh, you can refer to this on the net and uh, it is uh, used for emergency response like the kind of floods we have seen in the last two weeks. Uh, those kind of emergency situations are data communications capturing data in every field and trying to understand the water usage and then monitoring the volume and the quality of water. So this is something which uh, I'm sure you will find it very interesting. Smart irrigation, I've given two examples here of two companies. One is this Take Me Home in Thailand and Auto Agronom in Israel, where they are using, and I'm sure some of us uh, are also doing similar things, but we are doing this kind of precision irrigation and precision fertilizer application. This is called fertigation. These are being done more in uh, greenhouses. You know, but the challenge is really to take it from greenhouses into the open field cultivation. That's where actually the challenge lies. So I think we need to work on how can we achieve this uh, rollout from uh, greenhouses into the open fields. Using drones to apply pesticides, I think this is very commonly uh, being practiced now in some of the countries. This picture is from China, and I think you can do use drones for many other things. But I think in India currently, rightly so, there are security concerns, and then there is still no 
proper infrastructure of law around this, so because of which it's not being done. But I hope someday this will become a useful tool, a technological tool for the industry and for the farmers. This is again another example of a company in Hyderabad which is developing uh, cotton hybrids which are suitable for mechanical harvesting. Like I talked about using machines, cotton picking is becoming very, very difficult because uh, we have more than tripled our cotton production in the country in the last 10 years with the use of BT technology. So when you have tripled the uh, output, you have to also harvest the output. You have to pick the cotton. And cotton picking is done only by women in the villages. And this has resulted in a huge increase in rural uh, livelihoods. But the important point is that the cost has shot up so much that it is becoming unviable for the farmer. So you need to find machines which can harvest cotton. But for that, you need to first develop varieties which are suitable for mechanical harvesting. So that is what this company has done. This is a traditional variety. This is a mechanical harvesting suitable variety. And this is the machine which John Deere has, uh, is currently using through a miniaturization program. And they're making it suitable for Indian farms. And this experimentation is going on. Hopefully, in the next two years' time, this should come into the market. And some of these machines, and I have seen these machines in uh, countries like Australia, where I myself have done some harvesting of wheat, you will be amazed to see what kind of technologies come in these machines, you know, in terms of the GPS control, in terms of your ability, the machine itself will measure the yield of every line of uh, the grain quality, grain weight, and things like that. So these are all automatically done. So you capture a huge amount of data just by using some chips in these machines. So I think that, you, that also will come into the country very soon, which will help the farmers in capturing some of the data that will be useful for them. So we have seen that uh, this can result in about 70% increase in yield by using this system and a 100% increase in farmers' profits. So there are economics which are worked out around this. On the output front, I would like to say that uh, there are technologies which are developing nutritionally enhanced uh, grains and nutritionally enhanced food items. As we know today, uh, a lot of youngsters uh, want better quality food, so we are moving from quality to qu qu from quantity to quality. So some of the things can be naturally produced, so that's where the technology is working, and there are already, they're available in the world, we have to bring them into the country. Supply chain systems and storage systems we talked about, where it is on-farm storage or off-farm storage, both have to be developed in the country in a much larger scale, and uh, supply chain can be completely revolutionized in the country uh, through the use of technology and by reducing the role of middlemen. Food processing and instant food, smart grains and health foods, I'm sure all of you understand that this is a huge opportunity coming up in this space. Delivery systems, again, you know, these are all various ways of uh, delivering, whether it is a pesticide or a fertilizer or water, and how can we make it more precise and more effective. Services, each of all is quite familiar with all of that. Service centers for heavy machinery is a new model that is coming up. It has to be scaled up, but right now it is being tried in smaller uh, units in different places. But that, I am sure, is a way of overcoming the issue of smaller landholding size. And the farmer cannot, each farmer cannot buy the machines. So there will be a model of custom hiring and custom servicing which will happen through this. ICT-based extension we talked about, and solar energy and using farm waste, converting farm waste on the farm itself into a fuel which can be used or capturing solar energy for farm operations. So finally, I would like to say that we need to create an integrated platform, and this has to be an architecture of sensors and apps and satellites and cloud and various kinds of things, but it has to address farm-level data, I mean, all data capture, whether it is farm level or public data, or stakeholder data, partners data, and all of it, and store it. Use apps and sensors to capture most of the data with man minimum manual intervention. You know that in the country, whatever we do with manual intervention is bound to be either inaccurate or a failure, because we don't have the culture of t doing it in a very perfect way. So we have to also make sure that it is manual intervention is minimized and thereby reducing the cost. Data management and analytics, reporting dashboards have to be developed, advisory forecasting dashboard and communication methods. 
most of the things must be brought on the mobile because I think that the only thing which will work uh, we, in the villages where there is a technology uh, and infrastructure bottleneck uh, to overcome that you have to use mobile based technologies. So whatever we can put on the mobiles I think the farmer will be able to use it better. The farmers are uh, also young now as uh, the country has a very young population many of the farmers are also young so they will be happy to use technologies on the smartphone. We need, uh, of course, language is an issue in India. So when we talk to farmers, you have to handle multiple languages. We need predictive intelligence and a cloud-based platform. So uh, in the end, I would like to only say that uh, this is something which, uh, all this is fine, but all this has to be done in a cost-efficient way. You know, you, we cannot expect the farmer to pay very high price for all these technology-driven solutions. So the challenge really lies in making all this in a cost-efficient way and in an affordable way. And I already talked about mobile-based technologies. And finally, I want to say that agricultural innovation, innovation in the field of agriculture, uh, the startups, and then the entire ecosystem of funding these uh, kinds of startups is not well developed in agriculture as it is developed in the IT field. You have various uh, organizations pushing that forward in the IT field. We don't have uh, more than one or two agri-based funds in the country. We don't have an ecosystem of actually incubating and uh, developing startups to make it into a bigger, uh, uh, help them to scale up later and then make it into a kind of a regular business model which works. I think that's an area where the policy makers also have to help but also a lot of funding agencies also have to help. I'm sure NABAD is doing in the same direction. But if there are more funds uh, coming forward to really put together such, uh, such facilitating environment, uh, that is something which will make this run much faster. So I hope that will happen pretty soon. Thank you very much.